see if anybody participating online today. We will, uh, Jeff from Excipio will be remoting in. <coughs> This will be the first official test of a consultant remoting into the, the room. Yeah, and, and I'm moving in, in right now. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right, we are right at 5.30, so I'll call our EDA meeting to order. Karen, could we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Roberts. Commissioner Huntosh. Commissioner Husnick? Here. Commissioner Finneman? Here. Commissioner Lorge? Here. Commissioner Erickson? Here. Here. And President Bain? Here. With that, I'd like to invite everyone to rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Members of the EDA, we have an agenda before you this evening. I will entertain a motion to approve. I move we approve the agenda. A motion, a motion and a second. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose and the agenda is approved. We have a number of minutes to approve this evening. We're gonna walk through these individually to allow for any abstentions that might need to be made. And so with that, I would um, entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the regular meeting of July 12th, 2021. So moved. We have a, second. We have a motion from Council Member Husnick and a second from Member Finneman. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose, abstain, and minutes <clears throat> approved. Next minutes are from the downtown committee workshop from July 26th, 2021. I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve. Motion from Member Lorge. Is there a second? Second. Second from Member Finneman. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose. Abstain. And minutes approved. <coughs> Next item are minutes from the EDA budget workshop of August 23rd, 2021. Move to approve. Second. Move, move from Member Finneman. A second from Council Member Husnick. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose and I will abstain. I abstain. And Member Lord will abstain as well. Minutes from our Council EDA Planning Commission Joint Workshop of September 13th, 2021. Is there a motion to approve? I move we approve. Second. <clears throat> motion and a second. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Abstain. Oppose and one abstention, two abstentions. Member Finneman and Member Erickson abstentions. Are you keeping up? You doing okay? Awesome. One more. Um, minutes for our downtown committee workshop from September 27th, 2021. Uh, so moved. Oh, I okay, move to approve. Move from second. Member Erickson and a second from Council Member Husnick. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose. Abstain. abstain. An abstention from member Erickson. All right, minutes approved. Next item this evening is our Headwaters ex Scipio study. And Dan, I believe you are going to start us on this. Yep. I will tee it up and then I will pass it over to Jeff who is here remotely. Uh, President, members of the EDA, um, what we have tonight is an introduction to um, a study being proposed by Excipio. Um, what this is, um, it's a a fairly granular study of the Headwaters 123 parcel. Um, if you recall kind of the past studies that we've done um, for the Headwaters site have been not necessarily specific to data centers, but sort of that, that pre-flight work that most developments would do, phase one environmental wetland delineation. This study is the first one that we'd be looking at that would really do a granular dive in to see if the Headwaters site truly does fit and market well from a for a data or technology uh, standpoint. Um, a couple of things that's being proposed here is that they'd evaluate it from a utility standpoint to really look at the site and say, how would this site be served by utility? Um, same thing with fiber. We know fiber is adjacent to it, 
um, but one thing that was brought up in kind of initial conversations with Jeff is that all be, could be potentially be common trench. And a lot of times you might want two different locations for, for service to come in. Um, so that would all be evaluated uh, through this study. Once the study is completed, um, we would be able then to use those results to help better market the parcel for technology development. Um, so what's being proposed right now is just sort of an overview of the study. We're not asking for any decision tonight. This is a potential 2022 project uh, for the EDA. So I'll have Jeff, I'll turn it over to Jeff here, um, to have him kind of present the background in Excipio and kind of go through that presentation as to what um, the proposed study would entail. Okay, Dan, can you hear me okay? And I'm sorry, can you, can you mention his name just one more time? Excuse me? Can you just mention his name one more time? It's, it it's uh, Jeff, Jeff. Uh, Gilmer from Excipio. Okay. Jeff, are you able to hear us? Yes, can you hear me, Dan? Hello? I can hear you. Can you see my screen, Dan? Can you hear me at all? Sorry. That works. <laughs> can, you, can you hear us, Jeff? I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? Oh. Well, we're gonna turn your, yeah, you're way loud in here. Hold on one second. Okay, sorry. Don't talk, don't talk. Don't talk. <laughs> all right, try it again. Okay, is this better? It's, that's a little bit better, yeah. Should I try again? You want me to talk a little more? All right, now try it. Okay, how does that sound? Are we good to go? Technical difficulty. That's okay. <laughs> oh, if we change the, let's see what, what would happen. I'll try speaking, Jeff. Okay. Does this sound okay? Am I okay? All right, Jeff, let's try it one more time. Okay. How does that sound, Dan? Is that better? No, it's not. We're getting a lot of feedback on this, and I think it's... When there was sound on your end, it was extremely soft on my end, just to let you know. It's not it's us. Him just to call in on Mike had the Mike had the um, participant into his cell phone. Yeah, uh, Jeff, I'm going to give you. I'm going to email you a cell phone number. We'll have you call in. I'll set the microphone down to that, and we'll use the audio from my cell phone. And then 
Okay, can you can you dial into the Zoom meeting with that, Dan? We can we can't understand anything you're saying because we're getting so much feedback. Dan's emailing his phone number to you. So then call in on his phone number and we can try to get the audio from his phone while you're doing your presentation. Of course, the technology always works when I was testing everything. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, Tim. Good to know for our planning commission on Wednesday, because we were going to try to have somebody remote in. <laughs> Hello? Yes. Okay, let me get you muted and let me try getting on the. Okay. Let's just try at least pushing it through here because there's a gate in here where I shouldn't feedback. We have gates set up with our audio in this room. So let's. Are you getting out? Are you getting out already? Okay, I will call. I will call into the Zoom number. Sorry about this. Okay. Because this is set up as like a oh, registration. Wrong number. Because <coughs> this isn't set up in the.
Isn't a phone number that one? Hey Jeff, I got the computer or the audio and the phone in. Okay, is it? Can you hear me through the phone now? I, you know, I Jeff, I think it may be your microphone that's causing the issue on your end. Yeah, you're getting the echo that I had now. Okay, well let's. No, it's actually Zoom controls the microphones. When you use Zoom, that's one of their fun things to deal with. So it's, we're probably getting it on both sides. Um, Zoom doesn't let you control the microphone. It takes it over like others. Um, okay, let me just call your cell phone. I'm going to I'm gonna have to have some, disable some things and then come back in. And then I'll just call your cell phone, Dan. <laughs> He's now going to call my cell phone. If this doesn't work, we'll just have to try to reschedule this for time he can be in person. Again, my apologies for this. This okay. was working not too terribly long ago. Yeah, I think this is going to work easier. And then put it on speaker, put the microphone down, and yeah. Yeah, it worked out good when we did that with That's the planning commission. Phone. You could hear that okay. Yeah. There's something. It's, yeah, so the feedback I think may have been on his microphone. You there, Jeff? Yeah, I will put you on speakerphone, right? I can try talking now. Okay, is that better? It is, yeah. Let me get it. That mic input okay. turned up. All right, go ahead. Okay. And can you see my can you see my screen? We're good now. <laughs> Round up away, we're there. Okay, and you can see my screen okay, Dan, as well? Yes. Okay. Okay, so let me start. So good evening, everyone. Sorry for the technical issues here. We've got it worked out. Um, did everyone have an opportunity to see the document when we were able to send it out in advance? Dan, did you hear my question? Uh, there's a little bit of feedback there. What was the question? Just was, was the document sent out in advance for people to preview, or is this the first time you're seeing it? Yeah, they received it, yes, as part of the packet. Correct. Okay. So what I'm going to do this evening is I'm going to go through the highlights of it. I'm not going to get into specific, and I'll stop periodically for questions. Um, the first part here talks a little bit about the company background. A little background on Excipio. We uh, were founded in 2000. We've been performing strategic analysis in the technology area that entire time. 
data center lifecycle management is one of our key solution suites that we offer where we help people assess data center. That's both private and public sector. So in the uh, Minnesota market, we've worked with some very well-known companies such as you know, United Health Group, US Bank, um, a multitude of other, Ameriprise, et cetera, uh, down to smaller companies. Um, HP Fuller is kind of uh, the one that we work with them on their global data center. And in the public sector, we've worked with the state of Minnesota on multiple data center consolidation and other projects for testing new construction and external providers, as well as Hennepin County, Dakota County, City of Minneapolis, and others. One of the key things about the tip is we do not sell any products or services. We are strictly an advisory consulting firm that works with our clients to help them understand the technology and help put together a strategy to move forward. And then in their case, they would help ask us to help evaluate particular vendors that they may want to pursue. Those vendors then are also people that come to us in this. that are viable for a data center. And that's what our role is and what we're talking about here, helping to understand the stuff that you have and to take it to that next level where when someone is actually looking to build a data center or to move to your location, from a technology standpoint, it could be a lab building, it could be a technology company, a medical technology company or a data center, there's a whole nother level that they want to go to from that, uh, in that arena to really understand that some much more complex because of some of the significant things that they require for a data center or a Any questions so far? No questions so far. No, no question at this point. From my no. perspective, I will okay. say it's the audio is still challenging. So I feel like I'm hearing general gist, but not getting the full benefit. Um, yeah, I would agree. The, I, we still having some audio issues in here, Jeff, at this point. We can, it's, it's, you're fading in and out as you speak. Okay. That's probably because of the, the Yeah, because like you started out fine, and then all of a sudden you faded out to nothing, and then you come back. Yeah, so what happens is Zoom controls the microphone, and they audit the sensitivity of it. So when you're going from a phone to phone to the Zoom, the Zoom is dropping, bringing it up and down, trying to compensate. If I could propose, maybe we just reschedule this for a few, once we get this figured that's, out. I think, yes. Jeff, if you're okay. okay, can we just reschedule this for a future meeting? Because at this point, I think that's going to be the most effective thing to do is to, you know, put this at a future date. Yep. No, that's no problem, Dan. If it's not working, let's do it. We can do it. Quickly. Also, I would I would say so, Jeff. Thank you for being here tonight, and our apologies for the technical difficulties. Um, I would say also maybe to keep this. I know you weren't we weren't expecting to take any action tonight. This is more of an FYI for future 2022 consideration. But um, in preparation for maybe next discussion, perhaps um, members of the EDA, if you had any specific questions you were hoping to get from tonight, if you could just email those to Dan. Dan can send those on to Jeff, and then we can have kind of a more in-depth conversation next time we we hear from him. Does that sound okay? okay all right. And my apologies, Jeff. I'll be in touch with you uh, later this week and let you know what the plan is moving forward. Uh, no problem. That's fine, uh, Dan. Just let me know and we'll... Will do. Thanks, everybody, for your time. Uh, hopefully, it'll uh, we'll get it something scheduled. It'll be a little nicer the next time. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jeff. All right, with that, we are going to transition to our next agenda item, which is a pickup from our last um, discussion on the um, downtown vision statement. And Dan, I think you're walking through this. I will, uh, President members of the EDA, EDA um, what we have here tonight is an updated uh, vision statement um, from HKGI. 
if you recall at the last downtown committee workshop, he presented a proposed vision statement and there was quite a bit of conversation as to did that hit the mark, did that miss the mark? Um, and then last week um, he sent out um, a couple of updated uh, versions of that vision statement. Was One was the original and then the second one was an alternate. He'd asked for some feedback specifically to him on what members of the downtown committee felt was the, you know, the better of the two. Um, based on my conversations with him or emails uh, earlier today, he received um, feedback stating that the alternative vision statement was more on track when compared to the original one. So what you have here before you tonight is that um, proposed vision statement. It's on page two of the handout that is on the dais. Um, in the proposed vision statement for downtown, it says Forest Lake vision for downtown is to create a district that is welcoming to a broad audience of neighbors, visitors, and businesses, and a vibrant place with distinctive and memorable ways to experience it. And he's got dining, recreation, socializing, shopping, and living life. Um, so that is the proposed vision statement based on the feedback he received from the original and the alternate, and as well as the feedback he received uh, during the um, downtown committee workshop uh, on the vision statement. And it's before the EDA tonight, because we also have this on the council agenda uh, for consideration, because Bruce would like to get this adopted so we can get the vision statement started so then he can start working on the next level of plan. So right now, what we're looking for is just some feedback on what we see here from the proposed standpoint. And if there are any changes or it, does the EDA feel that this encapsulates the feedback or your uh, vision for the downtown vision statement? And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions or open it up for discussion. Thank you, Dan. Members of EDA, feedback that we may have. Clara, if you don't mind. Um, Dan, I, I, I attended both those meetings, but what did we have for a total feedback? Do you remember on any numbers at all? Total feedback from like, just on those meetings or just in terms just of like- Just on those meetings, well, in, in general, how many do we have in general? I'd have to go back. I know the online component was somewhere like 1,500 okay. to 2,000 total visits. I mean, it was fairly robust that we got, you know, from both the mapping as well as the um, the word wall. And then the meetings, I think there was 36, give or take, at the, the visioning workshop when they kind of did the first workshop. And then at the downtown committee meeting, that was last week, that was just normal downtown committee group. So I kind of came back from the group, but both virtually and in person feedback has been, has exceeded my expectation when I first started this project. Okay, the reason I ask is, you know, do they all kind of, is, it still fits into this vision here that we're looking at? For 1,500 people or 2,000 people, whatever, so. And what he tried to do with this vision statement is sort of take all of that feedback and then encapsulate it and make it, you know, forward, you know, trying to take that and try to get consensus among what came in, because obviously as you go through the online feedback, particularly, you start to see trends and patterns in there. And was trying to take this big giant basket and then kind of distill that down to what you see here and try to incorporate all of that feedback received to date. Uh, my, my comment just had to relate to the fact that it, the more people the merrier, you know, uh, we're a town of 20,000 people and I wish we had half that many <laughs> participating in this, so. Other points of feedback? Um, clarification, are we looking for an adoption? Are we looking for a motion tonight? And I know this is on council agenda this evening, so would you like to go into that with a vote of this group or? A recommendation would be if you if, if this proposed vision statement matches up with what the EDA's vision is, I'd like to go in knowing that so we can let council know that the EDA has reviewed this proposed vision statement and is in agreement, or if you have changes to it, what those changes are so council can consider that um, at their meeting tonight. Could you clarify what's under living life? What got into that category? Unfortunately, I, I, Bruce did not give me the breakdown as to everything was for the living life. I'm assuming that was probably um, I'm making an assumption here in terms of his wordsmithing. I'm assuming that has like, you know, just general life, you know, housing, housing kind of that's sort of the catch all for and those types of statements. Shopping in there, or, well, it shows grocery shopping, but we have shopping over in there. So I would assume that shopping is retail shopping, living life is more day to day activities. 
Awesome. I would agree that's probably where he tried to, because I know the conversation at the last time, the residency was sort of how does that fit in? And I think that's probably what he wordsmithed that out to. I, I think if I'm just drawing back to that same conversation, I think that living life was also incorporating services beyond just a retail experience. Points of feedback on where we sit today, Trin, go ahead. Well, my, uh, I don't value the vision statement that highly. So um, when it comes to fussing over the wording, I'm fine with the original proposed vision statement. I don't uh, find a great need to fuss over it any further. The original or what is on the? This original one here, this proposed. <clears throat> and I think the, is the, the proposal that's in front of us tonight, that's the updated. Correct. Is that correct? That is correct. And, I, and I'm calling that out. If you, if we're looking in page in our packet, if on page, um, I had some similar, I had a similar question, Pinto. Um, page 31 of our packet has the original and the original had the call out for specifically, you know, brick and mortar retailers, hospitality. The original was where we were starting with as being as specific as recreational trail users. And one of my feedback points for the one that's printed out on the dais tonight is I like the broader approach where we are calling out housing as part of the intro statement, uh, in, in, incorporating housing as the neighbors component. And then we've broadened things up in the second section where we're not, we're, we say shopping rather than brick and mortar retailers. And we've included dining. We're not specifically using referencing hospitality. Um, and we use a broader category of recreating rather than being specific of recreational trail users. Um, so I, I like where we've landed on the revision, but I did want to kind of make the reference back to the first draft because I think, um, I think we've moved in a positive direction with the second, with the update and being more, being more broad. I think it's more of a fit for the array of activities that we will have. Um, the one that in particular gave me some concern over the first version was specifically referencing recreational trail users, but not anything related to the lake. And so having the broader recreating category picks up multiple recreational uses, which I think should be our focus. But that was just my perspective. Finn, are you, are you, are you okay with that given kind of what's on the oh, current sheet? No okay. problem with any of it. Uh, sorry to diminish its value, but in my opinion, no. it diminished the value, so. Understood. Um, go ahead and, you know, word it however you like, I'm fine with it. <laughs> and you're more concerned about what's next, right? The. Well, uh, this becomes, you know, something that sits on the title pages of a report. And when you go back to review things later, the salient points are probably anything but this. It's the reality of what happened. Understood. The one comment I'll make, and I, this, I've unfortunately been absent from all community conversations. Um, I do like this alternative about, uh, more than the original. Um, the one thing that just pops off the page at me, which again, might be a nuance that's not terribly important, but when we're calling out neighbors, visitors, and then businesses, it's, I'm just curious how many downtown business owners might wonder, you know, is this goal to kind of recreate downtown into a neighborhood that it's a business is less important versus your, you know, when I think of traditional downtown, I think of a vibrant business community that people come to and then they leave the downtown to go home. Um, that's just, it just kind of, you know, I like this, but it's it's interesting businesses last when all, a lot of times people think of downtown, they think business. Well, placement's important. And so to your point, even just reordering, would it be visitors, businesses, and neighbors third? Would that be a better visual appeal and kind of sequence more how you would think about yeah, I guess, you know, if, if I'm thinking about downtown, what's most critical for a vibrant downtown? I don't even know that, I mean, I suppose arguably visitors are awfully important, right? <laughs> Regardless of how far they're coming from. Um, but I think having a vibrant business community would be top of mind for most people. But I think that's valuable, but I would say 
suggest that we incorporate that into a version that we would um, provide recommendation to council because I do think if it strikes you as it's being too heavy in a particular area or just secret maybe not optimally led the broader I know you weren't part of the conversation the broad the initial version did not reference housing anything related to housing at all and oh, I see that and, yeah. and so I like that, this better okay okay for sure but let's get it in the right order to your point so Dan, so I think it would be businesses, visitors, and then neighbors would be the sequence. Um, what if it was circular? So they, they have equal value. You don't have them in order. I didn't think the intent was to order them in importance. Maybe I'm wrong. Understood. But if you had them in a, a pie shape. Of, and that could be visually presented. So actually, so that that's a great call out as well, that to the extent that this becomes a graphic, Let's make sure that they equal they have equal importance. Obviously, if we're presenting the word, someone something has to go first. But if there's an opportunity for a graphic presentation that we would, it's our intent that those would have kind of a co-equal importance. That's and another just a good call comment out. for Leif, um, that I gathered out of the last workshop was the importance of um, homeowners downtown neighbors downtown that are supporting the business mm -hmm. and we're talking about adding residential downtown it's symbiotic yep oh, i'd agree yeah. i have no problem with the changes that's for sure i'm um i'm not uh, i guess one of this is a little bit of a knit when i first read this living life struck me as being maybe overly broad, um, but I couldn't think of an alternative term. And I I guess I do like that it does pick up some of like the day-to-day -day aspects that are maybe not called out in the other category. So I'm fine including it, but if anybody had a another phrase rather than living life, like, like now we're in word, deep in wordsmithing and that's not necessarily the exercise tonight, so. If you had the four together, that's exactly what's equal. That is, that is right. <laughs> so. Council has any perspective on that as well? The one thing that's not included in the four, Sam, that would be in living life is work. Uh, you are right, and also services. And we talked about, you know, that was a service or purchasing services is when we were filling out those forms, you know, working was one of the choices. And what they did is they picked the ones that came out the heaviest, you know, so it, you're right about that. And I think uh, my originally that I had put, put that down in for mine, but um, incorporate that. Living life is a big assumption that people want to I think overall it's a good statement though. It's gonna pretty much cover everything. So is anyone, um, so maybe in just in our conversation moving tonight, I guess I would propose that we recommend for council adoption, the proposed vision statement with the change of the reordering of the audience to be businesses, neighbors, visitors. That, that picks if, up, if that picks a, up our edits. If that's a motion, I'll second it. Motion and a second. Further discussion, amendments, I'm happy to amend if there's other things we would like to incorporate. All right, not hearing anything further. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed, and motion carries. Thank you all. Next item of this evening, our city updates. Patrick, anything for EDA's consideration tonight? Yeah, just a, just a couple of things, really. Um, EDA is always interested in what development may be happening. And, and uh, we currently have five in the pipeline developments, three um, proposed housing subdivision units of which total 254 units. 
uh, we have a mixed use um, submission and we have a possible senior living uh, facility. Uh, the pipeline, these are all very preliminary. Well, had very, you know, a little bit, little bit of discussion with each of those, but I think those five are, are pretty solid at this point, except maybe the senior living. We're still really early on that. So um, those should be coming forward shortly um, to the plan commission for site review, um, hopefully in the next month or so. So we may have a very busy 2022, um, but we'll see. With that kind of growth and with that kind of um, estimated units and development, uh, we will be going to the council tonight and asking them to hire a community development director. Um, as you most of you know, we've had a resignation. Donovan Hart re resigned from the city. He's our planner. Um, this does give, give us an opportunity to uh, re-energize re our community development department, add an extra body. We will continue to have a planner, but uh, as EDA discussed at a few meetings back, the, the need to focus a little more on economic development. Uh, an economic development director will be split between the economic development function and the community development function. So um, we hope the council will approve that. We're asking them to create recreate that position because it was here at one time and then to authorize the immediate posting of that position so that we can try to get that person in as soon as possible, being we have some savings from salary for, we've had two resignations, so the general fund can afford to fill that pretty quickly. Um, and also met with uh, Paul Gerard of the Plan Commission uh, from your September meeting regarding the developers with the MXR1 district and uh, their suggestions on there. Uh, Paul has volunteered the plan commission to take that load on and to uh, try to direct any investigations or changes of possible recommendations of the ordinance or standards. Uh, he thinks that it's a, be a good thing for the plan commission, so they will take that on. We will help guide them. Uh, we currently have um, an interim planner through Bolton and Mink firm uh, that if they need any technical advice, they will get it that way. And finally, uh, invite you all to the Senior Citizens Grand Reopening on Wednesday, uh, the Senior Center between two and five o'clock. Questions? Thank you, Patrick. Any questions for Patrick this evening? So we will be replacing Donovan Hart. We have a well, temp temporary right now out of Bolton and Main. Yes, no, the, the community development will be a new position. Devel development director will be a new position. We. We're big enough and we grow, are growing enough that we need both of those positions. There's no yeah, doubt about good. it. Any other questions for Patrick? All right. Next update, Washington County. Chris, thanks for being here. Thank you, President Bain and members. Good evening. Just a couple of quick updates for you. Um, we are beginning to start to pull together the Economic Development Steering Committee in Washington County, which would be Patrick and Dan and other city um, leaders from around the county to start to look at our 2023 to 2026 economic development work plan. And a couple of things that we're just starting to do some brainstorming on might be uh, to continue the open to business program, the pre-development finance program, which has been very successful. And we're looking at some opportunities to do some new programming, including maybe a revolving loan fund in the county and possibility of a, I'll call it a next uh, step or a CEO next type roundtable discussion for those second stage businesses that are poised to grow, but maybe are experiencing some challenges in either attracting and retaining talent or uh, digesting growth because uh, growth is a good thing, but sometimes it creates a whole new set of challenges and we want to be able to help our existing companies, those established companies continue to grow here and be successful. So those are some ideas that we're, we're bouncing around at the, at the present time. I should mention that uh, the deed business development grant program just recently closed. I don't know how many from uh, Washington County were submitted, but as soon as I find that information out, I'll, I'll, sh I'll certainly share it with you as well. There could potentially be more funding coming, so we'll keep our eyes open for that. And if any additional business grants are available, I'll certainly pass it on to Dan and Patrick as well. And then finally, uh, just a quick update. We did take out an advertisement in a national magazine called Site Selection for the Minnesota Tech Corridor. And so I'll send this round uh, to you and I have a couple of copies. I'll leave one with Dan, but I, I need to take one back to show the county board and the CDA board as well, but, but certainly send this around and 
Uh, I think the ad turned out really nice. So we're hoping to generate some positive leads from this national magazine. So and what's the publication? I, I know we'll see, I'll see it when it comes around, but what's the publication? The publication is called Site Selection Magazine. And it's, its target audience are site selectors from around the United States. Fantastic. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you. Any questions for Chris this evening? No, but the NAD did give me an update for the chamber. Excellent. Next is right on cue, the Forest Lake Chamber update. And Leif, go ahead. Yeah, so Nanette had shared with me a couple of comments. Um, they welcomed the Batteries Plus, their new location here in Forest Lake. So that happened recently. And there was incredibly positive feedback from the Batteries Plus corporate team saying that the reception that was offered by the Forest Lake Chamber was best that they'd seen. And so that was very encouraging um, for the chamber. Also, um, uh, two weekends ago, or a week and a half ago, we had the Path for Hope, Mental Health Awareness, and the 100 is Too Many 100 Mile Run, which was highly effective. Uh, it was in great community support. Um, Caleb, who traversed the 100 miles, most of it running, um, <laughs> Um, he'll actually be speaking at the October Chamber Luncheon on October 19th, so that's next Tuesday. And then uh, Nanette is participating in the Washington County Chamber Coalition 2021 Strategic Work Plan. So that's coming up. Fabulous. Thank you. And that being the end of our planned agenda, I, unless anyone has anything further, seeing anything, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion we adjourn. I'll second. Motion and a second. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose. And we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.